Hello everyone, in this video we're going to be talking about the synthesis of alkynes. There's only one way that you guys are going to be learning how to synthesize alkynes and that's going to be through the dihalide. Uh, we can have two different types of dihalides. Uh, we can have a vicinal dihalide and a germinal dihalide. And it's important to know the difference between those two. So in vicinal dihalide, you have the halogens on the adjacent carbon. So I can have chlorine here and a chlorine here. But on the other hand, if it's in a germinal dihalide, they are going to be on the same carbon, whether it's in the middle carbon or on the terminal carbon. It doesn't matter. As long as they are on the same carbon, that's going to be called a germinal dihalide. So how you really make these vicinal dihalides, you haven't really learned how you're going to be making germinal dihalides, which are made through the alkynes. Um, but vicinal dihalides can be made from alkenes. So another way of saying when you're trying to synthesize alkynes, you would have to now go through the synthesis of alkenes first, and then from there, make this vicinal dihalides to make alkynes. So to make an, a vicinal dihalides from alkenes, I would, I can go ahead and use a Cl2 with CCl4. And uh, that's just going to go ahead and place these chlorines on those adjacent carbons, obviously anti to one another. So I'm not really going to worry too much about the stereochemistry there. So I'm just going to go ahead and put both of those here. And then from here, I can use a, a double elimination reaction. So it's still going to be elimination reaction, just like you would see in case of uh, the formation of alkenes. But now this one is going to be a double elimination where you can remove two chlorines one by one and that's going to be end up ending up with the creation of an alkyne so for example a typical base that's going to be used to do so is going to be the NaNH2 and it's not only limited to the NaNH2 you can also use something like NaH and even LDA could be used as well so initially I want to go ahead and remove one of the protons I suppose if I you know grab this proton here And that comes out. So you make a alkene first with the chlorine on there. So you make the alkene with the chlorine still, one of the chlorine still there. And then in the second step, you use this NaNH2 again, and it's going to remove the second proton uh, that's going to be looking like this. And then you end up with making a alkyne now. Um, the important thing you want to know about this is there's really not any stereochemistry like you know how you get an anti-elimination in case of alkene so you got to be worrying about the stereospecificity there but here you don't really have to worry about the stereospecificity because of this um, creation of triple bond there because that's just going to be uh, drawn only one way so something to be careful with how you're going to be drawing the triple bond because it's supposed to be a linear uh, those triple bond of carbons are sp hybrid so i'm going to be drawing something like this so i can draw just a straight bond here so one two three four five and remember there's still one more hydrogen on that terminal carbon and the thing about this nanh2 that it's actually so strong that it's gonna go ahead and remove that acidic proton that it, these alkynes gonna have so this is going to grab that and it makes an alkyde and this alkyde would be used um, in the synthesis in the alkylation of these alkynes because this can be used now as your nucleophile and the base and you may have seen this nucleophile being used in um, as in two types of uh, reactions. So another way of saying I would be using at least three equivalent of NaNH2 to get to this point. And eventually, if you want to make an alkene, you got to work it up with water or a dilute acid. So if you work it up with just water, that's just going to be fine. So that's going to go ahead and make this right there. All right, so all it's really going to do is just going to protonate that particular uh, carbon and that will do the job. And if you use a little bit of acid, that's fine as well. The water is going to be good enough to just protonate that alkyde ion 
there. Uh, so if I want to go ahead and use NaNH2 3 equivalent, I would be able to, uh, and following the workup with water, I would be able to make that. If I use only two equivalent, what's going to happen? So if I use only two equivalent where, you know, the first equivalent is used right there, and then you have the second equivalent used right there, and someone expects that you're going to be making in this alkyne here. But remember, what's going to be happening is as soon as this alkyne is made at this step right there, it's any present NaNH2 will be used to deprotonate that. So you will still have some of these starting materials kind of left over in the middle. So it's better to use excess or at least three equivalent of NaNH2 to make this alkyl ion and then protonate this use of water to make your final product. So another way of saying, if I want to go ahead and do my final reaction, that how would that how that's going to look like? Instead of if I don't want to do the steps but just do it straight, I would say okay, I would need at least three equivalent of NaNH2 in the first step, and sometimes they may say just an excess, which is completely okay. And in the second step, you're gonna be doing the workup with water. So don't add water in the beginning because then the NaNH2 minus will be reacting with the water in that case, but rather do the water addition afterward. So that's how it's going to look like. Now, someone may argue that how would you really make an internal alkyne? So if I want to make an internal alkyne, uh, I could use an KOH in, in that particular case. So what that KOH really do, so let me take uh, this out again. So if I use excess KOH, suppose I'm going to just take out these hydrogens. KOH and heat. Now the KOH is not strong enough to deprotonate this uh, end product there. So uh, this is how it's going to look like at the end of the day. Um, so it won't be able to deprotonate that uh, particular carbon. So you're still going to have a hydrogen in there. Uh, but what really happens, this uh, KOH usually isomerize, so it's going to isomerize to an internal alkyne, so it's going to be making it a more stable alkyne, and is it does that uh, through the formation of uh, so-called an alene. So alene is where, um, so let's see, this is how it's going to look like, so one, two, three. So you're going to have a dull bond here and a carbon here and a double bond here. So this is just uh, one of the intermediates uh, called an alene that's going to be made through this transformation. So this is like in a, not a one-way step. Obviously, this is going to be an equilibrium. But then eventually what happens, this is going to break down. So this alene is really not very stable and it's going to eventually break down into a more stable compound, a more stable al alkyne, which is going to be the internal alkyne. So you're going to be seeing the triple bond in the middle now. So if I count, I'll count those carbons to kind of keep track of those. So this is one, two, three, four, and five. So now it's actually going to be between two and three. So that's right there, one, two, three. And then you're going to have four right there. And then you got this five right there. So this is how you're going to be making the internal alkyne. Um, but whenever you're using NaNH2, especially using an excess NaNH2, you're going to be making an terminal alkyne, and that's what it likes to do. But the KOH is, um, even if it makes an, a terminal alkyne, it can isomerize this to an internal alkyne, which is going to be more stable than, obviously, your terminal alkyne with the, the help of this uh, alene. Um, however, if you're trying to do these uh, alkylation reactions or if you're trying to use this uh, particular um, alkyl that you made as in your nucleophile, then you don't really want to use a KOH. In that case, you want to use NaNH2 so that you can create this and you can use this as a nucleophile to do like as in two types of reactions. Let me take another example here. What if you have this internal alkyne? What if you have this vicinal dihalide that's actually internal? And, um, you know, even if you have a geminal dihalide, it's still going to be the same story. Like I haven't really taken an example 
of Gemini and Dying Lights, but that's still going to be doing the same stuff. It's still going to be making the same type of uh, products. So don't get confused with that. So if I use SPOSE2 equivalent of NaNH2, then there is good chance that you will stop this reaction at an internal alkyne. But it's not really going to be the best way uh, because there is always going to be a fear that it's going to isomerize to an terminal alkyne. But if, you, if you're very careful with just using the just using 2 equivalent F NaNH2, you would make that. And you don't really have to use water in this case because there is no proton on those carbons that could be uh, depronated. So that's why you don't really have to worry about it. But if you go ahead and use, let's say, KOH there and heat, and then you will end up with this internal alkyne with no problems. So that makes it internal alkynes. Okay, but uh, if I go ahead and do the same reaction, but now I'm doing with excess NaNH2. So initially it would make that internal alkyne that we had there, but this NaNH2 uh, will isomer, this internal alkyne will isomerizes because of the use of NaNH2 and it's an, end up making this uh, uh, terminal alkyne in that case. So something like that. So obviously there's a negative charge so because it's going to be removing that proton. And then obviously you need to work it up with the water and uh, like, like I said, you didn't really have to do that in the previous step. So you got to work it up with water to make this uh, final terminal alkyne. So the take home message here is if you're trying to make an internal alkyne, use the KOH. And if you're trying to make an, a terminal alkyne, then you're going to be using your NaNH2. So Obviously, this first one, those two were internal alkyne because your triple bond is in the middle. But if your triple bond is outside, then it's going to be terminal alkyne. And it's only the terminal alkynes that's going to have this uh, acidic proton that can be removed using uh, a base and that could be used as a nucleophile. So if I give you a uh, simple example, that's gonna be used a lot. So let's say you did your um, stuff there and you made this terminal alkyne. So you wanna use a strong base and typical base that's gonna be used uh, would be the NaNH2. Okay, so, and then in the second step, I can go ahead and use some sort of uh, ethyl uh, bromide here. So what's that really going to do? So the first step, think of what's really happening there. So the first step is going to deprotonate that. So you're going to be making this uh, alkyl ion there. It's got a negative charge. And then in the second step, I'm going to be using uh, this alkyl halide, which is going to be the SN2 type reaction now. So this goes there and that comes out. And now you're going to be end up making, so I'm just going to copy this down, that, and keep in mind that you are making a new bond here. So I'm going to go ahead and show that with a different air color there. So you're making a new bond and then you're still going to have ethyl grip there. So previously you had one, two, three, four here. So one, two, three, four. And now you're getting two different carbons from this alpha group. So I'll call that A and B. So you got this A and you got this B. So be careful with your connections. Make sure you count to the number of carbons that you're going to be using. And uh, this is going to be used in synthesis. So, so far, uh, when you take uh, first semester sophomore organic, you will be this will be the first uh, method you're going to be learning how you make a new carbon carbon bond. Obviously, beside 
doing using in a nitrile because in nitrile you're going to have a nitrogen in there but here there's no nitrogen so this is one way you're going to be learning how you're going to be making a new carbon carbon bond using this alkyd and alkyd ion and do, uh, using that as a uh, nucleophile in the synthesis processes all right so this is uh the overall formation of your alkynes, uh, whether you're making in a terminal or an internal alkyne, it's important to know and how you're going to be using uh, those terminal alkynes in the next steps uh, in the synthesis where you can use as a, that as an uh, electrophile. Uh, you can use that as a nucleophile. All right, if you have any questions, feel free to leave any comments in the section below.